Hi everyone. I'm really glad to be with you in this time of COVID-19. I wish I was with you in person and we could do that lecture. Um, my in-person lectures are kind of funny and I try to make them enlightening and keep you awake. So I'm sorry to miss that and really sorry to miss the workshop. But I thought today that what I would do is um, take you through my gallery studio. I just rented this uh, wonderful commercial space around the corner from my house January 1st with the intention of having an ongoing gallery setting with openings and inviting people there. And of course, this whole mess has put the kibosh on that. So um, I'm going to actually take you around my gallery and I'm going to show you what I'm working on and talk a lot about those things. So let's go. I have to take my phone off of its little holder. So there might be a little bit of uh, up and down for a minute, but I hope you'll be patient and stick with me. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to start actually at the front door and I'm actually going to go outside for a moment and show you my fabulous sign outside. So welcome. I'll lock the door. Um, the first area I'm going to show you is uh, at the opening of my gallery. And I'm gonna start off with a very controversial piece. This basically says exactly how I feel right now at this time in life. I think you can probably identify with that. Sorry if uh, it's offensive, <laughs> but I, uh, that's about how I feel right now with what's going on. So let's just move on. I set up my gallery to actually be um, a space that people could imagine works in their home. And this is some sequin work that I'm doing right now. This is interactive. And you've probably seen those pillows that you can turn them one way and turn the sequins the other way. But I'm going a little bit further with this. And I've been working on painting and manipulating the surface so I can change the color and dimension. So this one is called Disco Mama. And what I've done is I've shown people how do these pieces look in spaces. It's hard sometimes, especially with art uh, of a fiber art nature, it's really difficult to envision them in a space. So I wanted to give people that option of being able to see them in their home. That's a little bit of a just a draped piece. And then I have these pieces right here, which are quite large, 36 inches around. And they are again, that same kind of texture. So I've got color happening with paint markers and with acrylic paints and oil paints and then you can come along and you can actually change the entire look of the piece. So of course before we had this pandemic occur uh, these have been extremely hot and popular and people have been really enjoying these. I just had a solo show. Um, of course now that we you know are in this era of having to stay away from things and not leave our germs behind they'll probably just have to be visually pleasing. So I've got some of these works up on the wall. And then you can see again, I have put it into a space so people can envision it. And because of lack of space, I've got some smaller ones on the floor. And this one right here is going to a show. And this one right here was just purchased by Emory Women's Health really beautiful in person. So one of the things that I'm going to talk about today is being experimental, not sticking with the same things that you're used to sticking with. Um, you know, try something new, try something you've never tried before. Now these works right here are 
storage cubes. And many years ago, I lucked onto a pack of storage cubes in the Goodwill for $5 and I brought them home and went into the studio and began to slice the plastic away and began free motion machine embroidering and stitching and doing all kinds of experimental work with them. So I'm giving you some of the close-ups. They hang by the system of hooks. They're L-shaped screws. So these as well can be completely viewer interactive. I can pull a piece from down here, for instance, and I can move it up to here, which of course completely changes the look of it. I've got all kinds of these for people to pick out in a variety of shapes and sizes. And here again, this one is Delta Airlines Inc. They purchased at this one. This is one of four series that they purchased. And this one just happens to be in Atlanta and is above the buffet. This is in a local townhome model house, a gray one. And then this was a custom commission I did in a very traditional home. So they fit just about anywhere and people love doing them. Actually, the woman who purchased this, she said that the next night she had a dinner party and she couldn't get people to the table to eat because they were rearranging the panels and having so much fun that they didn't want to sit down to dinner. Up here is some more sequin work, again with that same technique. And then this is my contribution to the hippie look, macrame. I used to do a lot of macrame in the 70s. I really don't want to do it again, but I do love that natural organic look. And so I stripped fabric and I use upholstery cord and made a really beautiful piece. I, I love this piece. So again, looking at everything as fodder for your artworks, for your creations, whether it's in the craft store or it's in the junk pile, it's in a thrift store, it's in an art store, in an antique store, there are options just everywhere for supplies and materials to do your creations. And here it is in a setting. And this piece right here is constructed out of sparkle vinyl and my recycled old business cards, as well as some free motion machine embroidery. So a lot of rich texture and it's all set in resin. Hanging from the ceiling is a large sculpture that is made out of metallic vinyl, which really looks like metal in person. And then we've got foss shape, which of course you would have learned a lot about. This particular piece is done with a heat press and my embossing technique. And I do wanna tell you all that um, I know that I've missed teaching the workshop and a lot of you are really wanting to work with Foss Shape. Um, it's available from wonderflex.com. Sorry, I think it's wonderflexworld.com. And I actually have three books so far out about Foss Shape. It starts with a beginner book and gets a little bit more into different materials uh, and different techniques and ways of using it. And those are available at blurb.com. Just Google Foss Shape, Lisa Rich, and you'll get, um, get my book. So at least you can get started until that time I can come and do a workshop. These are again, the metal, and this is what they look like in a setting. So it's really important for me to help the public visualize these unusual artworks and this is actually a drawing I did, a spec I did for a large commission, which I didn't get this particular sculptural work, but I did actually, I'm just about to start a very, very large, about 40 feet wide by seven feet tall in the sequins for a local new uh, wonderful project in Atlanta. 
a commercial project. These are free, uh, sorry, free motion stitching, yes, inside of them, but they're 3D printed. And then I've created little worlds. There are recycled apple bags there, orange bags, and bits and pieces of micro beads, uh, my fo original photos, fabric that's been free motion machine embroidered. So combining those things that you love to do can be really beneficial. Um, here are a couple more photos down here. And this one is actually um, in, installed in a bathroom. Then back to some mirrored uh, uh, pieces again and photos of them in a setting. And then I also have just recently been experimenting with free motion, you can see me there. <laughs> That's how reflective this mirror stuff is. Uh, with three, with uh, free motion machine embroidery onto this. So I'm still working with that. And I'll show you a few more examples of that. Um, these pieces right here, this one's got my business cards sitting in. These are commercial trays that I purchased. And then I 3D printed and did hand embroidery and machine embroidery and set it all into resin. So those are highly reflective and actually iridescent. Look, they look great in the light. So again, combining different things. Here are some more of the panel pieces, but instead of having color and instead of them being interactive, they are interactive, I actually have just stitched with no thread, just with the needle on the sewing machine which gives a wonderful texture. And here's the foss shape again. And for this one, I actually half stiffened the foss shape and then I rolled the edges in dye, in just Dynaflow. Dynaflow is my dye of choice. I love it. It's fast, it's easy, it's permanent. And then I've also got some of the wonderful, wonderful knitted wire. And this one is not a finished piece. It's just basically a maquette for possible other pieces and large too, which I show here in the photograph. Here's another one of the free motion machine embroidery stitching onto the mirrored vinyl. And then we get into a section right here of experiments that I'm working with in foss shape, quite large. And this is layers of different pieces of foss shape that have been sliced and stripped. And these are some sculptural works that I'm doing. And then I've got one that hangs from the ceiling and comes down into leaves and tendrils and flowers. And then right here is a photograph of uh, Liquid Sky. They're like a Cirque du Soleil in Atlanta, and so they've got some of my foss-shaped pieces as their backdrop for one of their performances. And then I've got a little bit of a cabinet with a variety of different experimentations. Paper flower, along with foss shape, along with clay, some 3D printed blocks, some free motion machine embroidery, and then my foss shape books, that's what they look like. Um, again, blurb.com, if you wanna get started and get a head, head start on using the foss shape, which is the most extraordinary stuff. And recently, I've actually been working with cork. So here's the first large cork piece that I've done. That's about 40 inches wide, 45 inches wide, 36, more like about 40 actually tall. And then we're gonna come, this is the little work area I've carved out for myself. So I do have another work area at home, um, but this serves me very well. I tend to work here most of the time. Uh, it is neat and clean. It isn't always neat and clean. Of course, it's neat and clean for you, but I am actually extremely organized and very, very neat and tidy. I tend to be that way because I have so many ideas in my head that I have to keep them, uh, you know, firmly uh, reined in. I can't have chaos um, 
with all those ideas. I have to be able to quickly pull from my stash. And here's my favorite machine of many. This is the machine Bernina, the 807 Minimatic. And I learned to sew on this in 1971. Um, my mother got so frustrated with trying to teach me to sew that she just threw down what we were working on and said, oh, Lisa, you're never gonna be a sewer. And years later, it ended up that I would often counsel her in challenges she was having as she was making things. Um, after she actually ran away from the sewing machine and me at age 11, I started sewing tubes and attaching them to the pretty dress that we were making. And so that was, I think, my first inclination that I was just going to do what I wanted, not what, what I was supposed to be doing. And you can see I've even got duct tape on here and it's very discolored and chipped. I have sewn dryer lint, eggshells, wet paint, wet dyes. I have put this machine through the ringer and it has served me well. I am definitely, you can tell I'm a Bernina nut. I'm gonna show you a little bit more of my workstation. So I've got basically the to-do lists um, and photographs, samples I'm working on for a quilting foss shape class, a uh, little paper and fabric piece that I'm fooling around with right now. Uh, my board for the works, the project, the large project that I just got. So some of the materials I'll be starting with. Another one of the mirrored pieces with free motion machine embroidery. My alarm system. <laughs> Another list of what to do. And then this is my 25 to $100 wall. So this is um, all kinds of pieces that I like to make my work accessible for a variety of different people. And so, you know, my work can go from $25 up to 14 or 15,000 right now. So these just make it so that there are little bits and pieces and wonderful little um, sculptures and framed pieces and manipulated pieces. Um, a collaboration I did with Virginia Greaves. We did a quilt crop collaboration that was amazing. And I like to make it so that everybody can buy one of my works. So if they don't have a ton of money, there's always something that they can fall in love with. And then this is just a little wall I've got for sculptural pieces. And then right here are actually my butterflies, some of my butterflies careening across the wall. Um, I've done really well with the butterflies. They've been a consistent, you can see a lot of the installations with butterflies on my website, monalisa.com with the E before the I, M-O-N-A-L-E-I-S-A.com. So I've done a lot of the butterfly installations and, and so I just have a few samples here. And another little 3D print with a fox. And then another cutout piece. This one's a stationary piece. This isn't viewer interactive. And again, a lot of free motion machine embroidery in there. And these were some sort of strange placemat things that I bought. I have no idea what they were for, but I have finally put them into this wonderful little mini sculptural piece. I love it and a little paper piece with all kinds of little worlds that I've created out of a variety of different um, papers, some Ikea wallpaper. Down here is lipstick on a pig. It's just ready to go to the framers. And that has a variety of, it's like Lucite, an acrylic product, cut out into different, um, different, sort of configurations. The reason why I actually use this is because the pieces that came out of these pieces are part of my paint by no numbers, uh, which you can see on my website as well, which are kind of like these interactive pieces in plastic. And then I've mixed with paint and paper. A free motion paper piece. And a very cool reflective. I wish you could see it. It's got, the light's got to hit it a certain way, but you can see this rainbow reflective quality of this work. And another paper piece I'm working on with uh, some marbled paper that I made. 
uh, sculptural work that's in progress right now. And this actually has foss shape inside of it. So I've put foss shape in between two layers of this very odd hold. Um, I think it's like a stretchy bathing suit type fabric. And I have sewn them together and created these sort of cacti sculptural forms. I'm not quite sure where that's gonna go. And then down here is one of my new, newest pieces that I'm extremely excited about. Um, I'm trying to go back a lot to my free motion machine embroidery roots because I really missed working on that. And so this piece is quite large. It's 68 inches by 42 inches. And it is all done with free motion machine embroidery on black velvet. It's also hand dyed and you can see it kind of will reflect all of the little bits and pieces of fluff but once i have it framed um, and cleaned up it's i've done some really had fun doing some of these free motion areas and then another one that i have just finished working on is i have just started putting my designs and photographs onto commercially produced jacquard weavings and then manipulating those weavings. So this is some recycled Nuno felt and some fabrics and then I've mixed it in with netting and free motion machine embroidery. And I'll pull back here some more recycled Nuno felting and fabrics. And let me just, hope you're not getting dizzy by now. <laughs> pull back until you can see the entire view. I also want to show you my storage area. So this is it. There's my storage area and I told you I had, you know, it, it's a little busy right now, but I have everything marked and everything where I know where it is. Yes, I love tacky glue. And so I've just got a tiny storage area, but it's, it's you know, it's well equipped. So I'm just going to put this back on and talk to you a little bit more. All right, hopefully this worked out. Hopefully you can see me. Uh, so I think that one of the things that I would have lectured about when I came to see you is it is really important to find out who you are as an artist and to break through that. Um, and what I mean by this is are you someone that loves to do repetitive tasks and feels the most comfortable repeating something, building on that, and just sticking with one material? Or are you someone who, like me, at the other end of the spectrum, just loves to try everything and anything and everything is fodder for art? Or are you somewhere in between? And you know, I work with so many different materials and so many different kinds of techniques. And that's what I love to do. People have tried to peg me into holes for most of my life. I, I just don't listen to that anymore because that's not who I am creatively. And so, you know, with the Foss shape, it was introduced to me about six or seven years ago. And I mean, what an incredible material. I, I mean, it just was able to do something sculptural. And then I found out that I could heat emboss it. And then I found out that I could dye it. And it just has so many p potential possibilities that actually I'm still working with it, which is unprecedented. I mean, I really think the two things that I've worked with longest were free motion machine embroidery, as well as, um, you know, the Foss shape. And those are the two things that just seem to be consistently I return back to and seem to be, you know, my base. Um, so I just want to encourage you to think about who you are and what you want to do and 
to follow that path, but also allow yourself to experiment, allow, allow yourself to grow and to try new things. It isn't scary. Um, what, what's the most that can happen? Uh, I mean, I have thrown work into the trash. I have re cut it up and repurposed it. I have cut up things that I spent 600, 700 hours on because they weren't successful and I knew they weren't successful and I had to use them in some other way. Um, I've let some of my sculptural pieces go, you know, into outdoor exhibitions and then, then they disintegrated in the landfill. They were made out of wool and, and so they were able to do that. Um, so I just want to encourage you to try experimenting, try to push yourself a little bit. And um, I really wish that I could have been, you know, there with you because I have a whole entire PowerPoint presentation of my older work and, uh, you know, a life story that is, is kind of fun and interesting and where I got to, to now. But thank you for giving me the option of showing you my new space when I can't have anybody over here and talking about the things that I'm working on right now. So I hope to see you next year when this, uh, you know, gets resolved and maybe you'll have me back then uh, for an in-person lecture and workshop. Bye.